Hello, my name is Katie. Welcome to my channel. First of all, thank you so much to those of you who have shown so much love and support for the guide I made for how to beat the demon of hatred. It really means a lot to me and gives me so much confidence to continue making guides. I've gotten a lot of requests to make more Sekiro boss guides. I've thought first to tackle Owl Dad. From the Demon of Hatred guide, I've actually learned a lot. So I'll be following that same format for making a complete guide, as in I'll cover everything that you need to know, that you feel like you're just missing or you're just not able to see, just because there's so much to deal with, especially in a fight like this. There's just, it's just so fast and you just can't handle it sometimes. Like you just don't know what to do. So I've not only broken down all the moves and all the tells, you know, everything in slow motion. So you can see up close, like, oh, so these are the attack windows. These are the times where I can heal or regain my posture. From this structure, I hope you'll be able to build your own creativity because it can be such a fun fight. You can do so many different things. Hopefully watching this guide will inspire you. And after watching this guide, you'll be like, oh, yes, I'm just ready to do this. I want to pwn. I want to beat this fucker. Let's move on and hopefully you'll enjoy this guide. I recorded exactly 100 fights with Owl Dad, where I experimented with different tactics, utilizing attack windows, just to be able to no hit him consecutively so that I could see with confidence that yes, this is the most viable, straightforward and low risk strategy for me to turn it into a guide. Owl Dad has a total of 17 moves, so from this many recordings, I was able to get all the clips I need to be able to show you the variations from his highly responsive AI. This guide will be in six parts. In part one, I'll go over key points about this fight and rules to help you win. Oh, got you! Part two is an equipment rundown, the tools, consumables, and skills that will offer you considerable advantages in this fight. In part three, we'll look at the pros and cons of some combat arts that you can use. Part four is a full breakdown of all the moves that occur in both stages. Part five is a breakdown of the moves that occur only in stage two. And finally, part six is one of my full no damage fights with in-game commentary. Got you! Part one. All the key points and rules to help you win. I'm here to help you understand two things about this fight, and they are equally important. 1. This fight is a culmination of everything the game's been trying to teach you in terms of its combat system. His attacks have quite a few variations, and he chains his attacks quickly, so he's really going to put your reflexes to the test. What the fuck?! Where you'll have to deflect loads of regular attacks, Mikiri counter the thrusts, jump the sweeps, and at key points, you'll have to reposition yourself to get to safety. And all the while, you'll have to be mindful of posture management. Fuck it. 2. This is a posture fight, where you have to time your attacks very carefully. His moves are incredibly difficult to interrupt, so rather than attacking at all the wrong times and getting yourself punished, your focus should be on responding to his moves accordingly and grabbing those tiny attack windows as they become open to you. In parts 4 and 5, I'm going to show you when those attack windows will be. Here are some rules that should help you with your confidence. Rule number one, face your opponent head on. If you're used to the Soulsborne games, I can understand how difficult it can be to shake off these reflexes. However, dancing around is absolutely the worst thing you can do in this fight. This one-on-one -on -one close combat system has an incredibly realistic AI, where if you choose to lock off or dodge to evade the moves that you're meant to deflect, his attacks will most certainly track and punish you. The best thing you can do is get right in his face, and since he's always performing moves to create distance, your focus should be on closing that distance. Rule number two, attack to deflect. And by this, I'm referring to his incredibly fast counterattacks. A lot of his moves have super armor, which means they have a solid defense and cannot be interrupted. If you're both attacking at the same time, more often than not, the computer will grant his attacks over yours. So having timed your hits very carefully, you've got to follow up with immediate deflections because his counterattacks come swiftly and without mercy. 
Rule number three: be aggressive with posture management. I understand how frustrating it can be to be advised to be more aggressive in this game because it can be so easily misinterpreted as spam your attacks as often as possible, which, as we all know, is a prime way of getting yourself killed. To clarify, being aggressive is all about balancing posture, doing everything within your power to drive up your opponent's posture meter while keeping yours low. And since Owl Dad hits like a fucking train, this fight is more than anything an endurance. The real challenge is to be able to pwn his posture as quickly as possible, which is why rule number one, staying close to him, is of the utmost importance. You need to be right there in front of him to be able to get those precious hits in before one chain of attacks flows into another. This will help you quickly get him down to half health, which makes posture pwnage a lot easier. As you need to worry about safeguarding your own posture, this brings us to part two: equipment. One. To safeguard your posture in a fight like this, I highly recommend popping Gorkan sugars. This incredibly useful buff makes it so that even when you mistime your deflections, your posture bar remains in a safe, small, and comfortable range. This one little consumable gives you so much room for error because it helps keep you in the fight longer, so you'll be able to familiarize yourself with his attacks rather than getting your posture instantly eviscerated. I recommend equipping the sugars rather than the spirit falls because you'll need to conserve your emblems for emergencies. Two, moving on to prosthetics. I recorded these fights on a playthrough where I was practicing for a run, so I didn't have the time to get all the upgrades. I'm suggesting tools that you most likely would have already gotten at this late point in the game. Let's get this. And besides, they work brilliantly. The first prosthetic I highly recommend is the Mist Raven, preferably with Fang and Blade unlocked. I typically stay away from relying on prosthetics in major boss fights because the worst thing that can happen is the fight isn't even halfway over and you've run out of emblems, making you feel totally helpless. But since we're using the Mist Raven in absolute emergencies, this is not something you'll need to worry about. Owl Dad is a right cunt and behaves almost like a real person. He has the tendency to push you into tight corners and then deal devastating combos that you can't escape from. In these instances, Mist Raven is undoubtedly a lifesaver. If you're unfamiliar with using Mist Raven, the timing of it works exactly like a deflection. The upgraded Aged Feather version allows for slightly more room for error. Activating it right as the attack is about to land allows you to teleport right through the attack and your opponent without taking any physical or posture damage. If you've got Fang and Blade, you can follow up immediately with the attack button, which will cause you to spin around and deal a poning slash up your opponent's back. I recommend using this only in extreme circumstances, when you're stuck behind a pillar or directly in a corner. The second prosthetic I recommend is the Umbrella, the base version works just fine. This is only used in the second stage, and it's not entirely necessary, but it does help you shave off fight time and it can reliably avoid a specific attack. If you're not comfortable with switching prosthetics mid-combat, I can show you how to evade this attack so you won't need to equip this. Once you've grown more confident, I highly recommend bringing Arco and Divine Confetti, which gives you an increased damage buff of 12.5% and 25% respectively. Here are the skills I recommend for this fight. From the Shinobi Art skill tree, Mikiri Counter, Shinobi Eyes, Midair Deflection, and Midair Combat Arts. From the Prosthetics Art skill tree, Fang and Blade. From the Ashina Art skill tree, Ascending Carp, Descending Carp, and Flowing Water. All of this will help you tremendously with posture management. Part 3 Optional Combat Arts For major boss fights, I usually don't recommend combat arts because, in the midst of deflecting and counter-attacking, combat arts are an easy way to get yourself killed. Yeah! 
However, if you're feeling spicy and confident and want to experiment with reducing fight time and really utilizing those attack windows, here's a list of combat arts I recommend and we'll go over the pros and cons for each of them. 1. Floating Passage This one's a personal favorite because it's got instant activation and it's constantly chipping away at your opponent's health bar, which eventually helps you with building up their posture, and it doesn't require any emblems. Plus, it just looks really cool when it's imbued with confetti. The downside is, compared to other combat arts, it doesn't deal as much damage, so it's less efficient with interrupting moves. 2. Ichimonji Double This one is also free of emblems, and it deals a good chunk of posture damage while allowing you to recover your own. However, its greatest downfall is its ridiculously slow wind-up, which makes it quite difficult to time. 3. Mortal Draw The best thing about this move is that Owl Dad is exceptionally weak to it, and it continues to be quite effective even when your emblems have run out. Unfortunately, it's also got a bit of a slow wind-up, and it costs emblems, which takes away your ability to use prosthetics in tight spots. 4. Spiral Cloud Passage So congratulations, you've played the game so much that you managed to acquire the most expensive combat arts. Which is quite special to me, because this is the move I used the very first time I managed to beat him. It's an OP version of Floating Passage, so it shares the same benefits. It activates instantly, it's fast, it's furious, it continuously smashes through health and posture bars even when your opponent is holding block. And it still deals impressive damage after you've run out of emblems. That being said, using this means sacrificing prosthetics during emergencies. Do bear in mind that whichever combat art you choose to use, just like with regular attacks, it's so important to immediately follow up with deflections due to his swift counterattacks. For the sake of devising a reliable strategy for this guide, I chose to not use combat arts for my no-hit attempts. This helps to minimalize risk, and it's a lot less complicated. Part 4. The moves that occur in both stages. I have to mention that I recorded all these fights in a playthrough where I was practicing for my deathless no heal run, so I never healed whenever I got hit. I fucking hate you so much. <laughs> but I can still show you the best healing windows. These are usually traded off from your biggest attack windows, as in when you're able to get his back turned to you. Other than that, you'll have to be fast with creating distance to heal, and then getting right back into the fight because he does punish you for healing. If you're doing this in New Game Plus, or if you're using a save file, you can simply ignore the dialogue prompt, run straight up to him, buff up, and attack him to start the fight. If you choose to trigger the dialogue, you won't have much time to buff up, because he'll initiate the fight straight afterwards. If this isn't your first attempt, then entering the boss arena past the first set of pillars will trigger the fight, so it's best to buff up right at the door. Be sure to have Mist Raven equipped for the first stage. Let's move on to breaking down the moves. We'll start with singular attacks, and then progress to combos. Number 1. Perilous Sweep This move can happen from many different points. It can start with him running at you in a zigzag pattern. It can happen in the midst of successive hits. It can also occur one after another in quick succession. The kanji for danger will appear right before he performs the sweep. After that, he'll quickly roll away. If you see the kanji flash in the midst of combat, you can safely jump without having to worry about whether or not it would be a thrust, which has a much slower wind-up. It's quite tricky, but if you time your jump right, you can land on him to deal some posture damage. This move can also be interrupted with just regular attacks if timed correctly. Don't heal right away if you get hit by this. Wait for a safer opening. Number 2. Overhead Guard Break This is a big, heavy move with a slow wind-up, and it takes two full seconds to perform. He'll raise both arms high up overhead, build up the momentum before slamming down his sword. There's two ways you can go about this. 
You can deflect it, however, it being such a big heavy move, it will knock you back even when you deflect it perfectly. Sometimes, you might still be close enough to get a few hits in, however, if he's knocked you back so far that you can't reach him in time, don't spam your attack because he responds very quickly, such as with a perilous sweep. Don't heal right after you land the deflection. 2. You can do the sidestep. If you summon all your courage, hold your ground and wait for the split second before the sword comes down, you can dodge around behind him and get a few hits in. This is also an excellent time to heal. If, however, you move out of place before he's fully committed to the move, he will try to get you by quickly turning it into a sidelong slash, so always deflect at the ready. Number 3. The Push-Off Somersault He does this move often to create distance. It can happen at random or at the end of a chain of attacks. He'll step on you for leverage and push off into a backward somersault. It's a posture poning move, however, it doesn't really count as an attack because if you fail to deflect or block, it causes flinching but no physical damage. In the first stage, after he's fucked off to the distance, it's safe to run towards him and get one or two hits in. However, in the second stage, he'll switch things up and add a finishing attack at the end. Number 4. Double Shuriken he might perform this move standing still or after throwing out firecrackers. Sometimes he'll follow up with a combo, so be ready for it. Unless you're pwned in midair, which is why you should refrain from jumping around, the double shuriken only deal chip damage, so for now you can safely push on. Number 5. Random Firecrackers This move can happen at any time, after attacks or at random. They can even be performed one after another. It starts with him jumping back, and for a split second, you can see his hand reach to the left, he'll throw down a cloud of black powder, which turns into a burst of firecrackers that deal considerable physical and posture damage. Shit. Ah! If you have the space, right as you see him reach for the powder, run backwards. If you're stuck in a tight spot, you can activate Mist Raven to evade the attack completely. Another option, if space is limited, is you can run directly towards him as soon as the powder shows up. However, you might have some trouble responding to his swift follow-ups, or you might miss out on some posture poning opportunities. Sometimes right afterwards he'll just stand around, or he might utilize this moment of confusion as concealment and rush through the explosion with a chain of attacks. What the fuck?! Getting hit by this will cause you to flinch, so immediately hit dodge to safety roll and deflect at the ready. Don't heal here, wait for a better opportunity. Number 6. Random Shadow Rush I wanna fight you in a corner. <laughs> Which can turn into Shadow Fall if you don't interrupt it with a Mikiri counter. This even happens if you manage to deflect this OP as fuck perilous thrust attack. Whoa! Jesus, that was lucky. He starts with a running zigzag, and then he'll aim his sword downward in a slow wind-up. The kanji for danger will appear, and you need to wait for it to just start fading, and that's when you hit the dodge button to Mikiri counter. Getting hit by Shadowfall will likely kill you. <coughs> what the fuck?! However, if you got hit by Shadow Rush and you were fast enough to evade the Shadow Fall, what the fuck?! You can heal right after, provided you be ready to respond to his follow ups. During his wind up for Shadow Rush, you'll have just enough time to heal. Number 7 The Firecracker and Shadow Rush combo. This one's literally a combination of those two moves. As he jumps back, he'll reach to his left side and throw down the powder. Behind the smoke, you can just see him bring his sword down to ready for Shadow Rush. The kanji appears right as the firecrackers are done going off. You wait for it to fade, then hit dodge to Mikiri counter. You can immediately follow up with a few regular attacks. He'll almost always perform the push-off somersault, so remember to deflect for extra posture buildup. You can also rush towards him right as he's jumping back to reach for the powder. This will cause you to miss the full combo entirely. Number 8. The Shuriken and Somersault Slam This one almost always starts with a running zigzag. 
He'll throw one or two shuriken, and then launch towards you in a somersault, ending with a powerful slam. You can deflect the slam, however, just as with the overhead guard break, if the deflection pushes you back and you can't reach him in time to get a few hits in, take care not to spam your attack or he will likely punish you. If you're lucky, he might miss you entirely, or you can sidestep at the last second to get behind him, both of which will allow you a free hit. Getting behind him is also a good time to heal. Number 9. The Three-Point Rush This move is two swipes, left to right, ending with a perilous sweep before he rolls away. Tap to deflect and jump as the kanji fades. Number 10. The Spin Slash This move has two variations. It can start with one swipe, followed by a spinning double slash. It can also start with two swipes instead of one. There is a tight attack window here for you if you hit him immediately after deflecting his spinning double slash. However, if you don't hit him fast enough, he can deflect it. Number 11, Shuriken Slash. This move can happen from many different points, when he's just standing around, or after he's thrown a single shuriken, or, most alarmingly, when you're running away from his firecrackers. He'll fire the shuriken and then rush at you with a powerful slash. It's a heavy attack that will push you back even with a perfect deflection and results in a long stagger if blocked. Be ready to respond because he can use this window to pwn. Don't heal right away if you get hit by this. What the fuck? I was deflecting! Number 12, Repeating Forward Slash. He usually does this after receiving a couple hits from you, and they are two slashes one after another in the same direction. The timing is slower than his usual attacks and can be tricky to deflect perfectly. Number 13, Firecracker Slash. This is one of his most devastating moves, and yet is surprisingly easy to evade, thus providing a good attack or healing window. It can come from a spin slash combo, or a two point rush where he slashes twice. He'll give you a good shoulder bash, finishing with a slash that pushes you back. He'll raise his arm to throw down the powder, and by the power of living force, his sword will be imbued with fire, delivering a killing slash simultaneously with a burst of firecrackers. Given the space, the safest tactic is, immediately after deflecting his shoulder bash combo, run round to the right to get behind him, and you'll get two free hits or a nice healing opportunity. You can also interrupt the fire slash by persistently attacking right after the last deflection, as the powder shows up, However, this can be quite risky. If he's got you stuck in a corner and you can't move to the right, this is where the glorious Mistraven can be put to good use. When you see the powder, activate your prosthetic to teleport right through the fire sword swipe. Follow up with the attack button to perform a backslashing swipe. Be mindful of his immediate counterattacks. Don't wait too long to activate your Mist Raven. Part 5. The moves that occur only in the second stage. After the first death blow, you can get one hit in, and then he'll jump back, disappear, and turn into this annoying owl spirit that you can't lock onto. Which brings us to number 14, the Chasing Spirit Owl. Yeah. There's two ways you can go about this. As soon as he disappears, you can either run as fast as your little shinobi legs can carry you to the other end of the arena. Right, running away. Or you can switch from your Mist Raven to the Umbrella. Simply activate your prosthetic and stay right where you are to shield yourself from the overhead ponage of when he turns back into Owl Dad and comes crashing down. After he slams down, you'll be able to re-lock on, and now you can switch back to your Mist Raven. Be ready to respond because he'll follow up quickly with either a perilous sweep or a combo. 
It's quite devastating to get hit by his reappearing slam down. I fucking hate you so much. However, it's best to heal at another opportunity. Number 15, the disappearing finisher. Now in stage two, there are five moves from the first stage that he'll sometimes finish with that same disappearing trick. They are the double shuriken, the overhead guard break, the shuriken somersault slam, random firecrackers, and the firecracker slash. You can respond with the same tactics by either running away Where did you go again? or shielding yourself with the umbrella. Number 16, the pushback somersault with shuriken spread shots. He now adds a new attack at the end of this move, a five shuriken spread shots. This now applies to any time this move is performed, such as after Mikiri countering his shadow rush. So now in this stage, after deflecting the somersault, be sure to deflect again before running towards him. Since he's created distance, you can heal if you get hit by this. Number 17, the Firebird Shadow Rush. This move can start randomly or after firecrackers. He'll extend his arm to the right and then summon his owl to perch on his arm. He'll then absorb its powers to send a torrent of fire rushing at you. As the flames burst forth, the kanji warning will appear. Wait for it to fade, then jump to evade the fire. This is followed straight after by Shadow Rush. Another kanji will appear. Wait for it to fade, then hit dodge to Mikiri counter. Just as before, failure to interrupt this will cause it to transition to Shadow Fall. What the fuck? Which you can still evade by running away. God damn it! Sometimes he'll start from too far away to where the attack will fail to connect. However, he'll usually end up close enough to where you can get in a few hits. Summoning the Firebird powers requires quite a long wind-up, offering you a perfect opportunity to heal. Okay. Bonus. This is sort of a move, but it's more about his AI. If you pick the right timing to initiate an attack, you can trigger a back and forth with him of attacking and deflecting, which helps with building up his posture meter. Should you decide to attack after closing in the distance that he often creates, if you don't hit immediately without hesitating, you'll risk competing inputs and trading damage. So that's it for all of the moves and pretty much all the tips that I can think of to offer for this absolute cunt. Anyway, without further ado, here's my no damage fight, one of my no damage fights. I think this is the one that's the most fun. I'm really proud of it. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. All right, uh, I don't know how I got hit just now, but whatever, still trying to get the shorter no hit time frame. Confetti, Arco.
Come here. That's one. Jesus, that was lucky. Okay.
Oh. One second. Let me move the mic closer. Jesus. I keep sliding back. Okay. Come here. Come on. Another no hit. Yes, this was faster and much, much better. He even deflected the fucking shadow rush. <laughs> really lucky, I think. Or maybe it's just reflexes. Yay! Very, very happy. Yes. Take a bow. Oops. Accept your gifts and take a bow. Very good, Wolf. Very good. 